first, Newby Red Tone stepping up. We discuss sports, all sports, nothing but sports. I'm joined by two sports analysts. Lloyd Marville. Kari. Ladies and gentlemen, we're finally here. I mean, I would have thought this never this day would never happen, but it here happened. I mean, it's really incredible. I mean, the backdrop and the stadium, the architecture is incredible. I mean, the way they designed the stadium. We're in, we're in Beijing, China, for the Olympics that are currently going on right now. It's really a fantastic time. I mean, it's good to see it's camaraderie between all the, all the continents. You know, mm -hmm. coming together, you got the six rings. I mean, it's just, you know, we're all coming together. You don't worry about the war and all that crap. We're all coming together. It's a time of peace and to embrace the great athletes. But let's not get cute here. I mean, we've been in Beijing for a while, and, and the big story, I mean, is going to be the, the USA basketball team, and can they win the gold? So the question is, is the USA basketball team ready to win the gold? Yeah. They're hungry. They, they look hungry. Just, it, I, I feel the teams that they're going against, they're more starstruck than actually going to be competitive because the USA, with... When you have Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, Michael Red, uh, Dwight Howard, it's just, and you have some of these players as bench players, yeah, come off, come off the bench, like this, this that's relentless. You don't have a little break. He's like, oh, Kobe's gonna be off. That's okay. You got Dwayne Wade coming in. So I feel as though this is a great team. The way it's or, you know <coughs> it's structured and all that. I think gold. If they don't get gold, it's gonna be it's a total a failure. Total disappointment. It's a failure. Not Total disappointment, it's a failure. First of all, every every time there's the Olympics and we don't get gold, it's a failure. Yeah, true. I have a problem with this USA team. Why? They're not the 92 Dream Team. Carl Malone, Larry Bird, all those greats on that Dream Team. They got guys on that team I'm not a fan of. I don't know when it comes down clutch, can Carmelo Anthony oh, pull it together? I don't like Carmelo. I don't like Carmelo I've Anthony. never been sold on LeBron James, Kobe Bryant... I don't know when, 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 when it's adversity, can they come to perform their level of talent. That's what worries me. I'm not worried about the coach. The coach is a good coach. Coach K. Coach K is a good coach. Mm. He's always going to have many in the NBA, you know, offer. He's a good coach. The skill's there. We are the best players in the world by far. I'm worried about it's going to come to effort and heart. And I don't know if we have 13 guys on our roster who could do that. Let me tell you this right now. I think the USA is going to win the gold. Okay, I think we're, we got the best players. Every know. time we always But here's the players. problem with sure. guessing you're at about the USA basketball team. We finally got a good mix, but we a lot of times bring type B players. Tyson Chandler, you know, the, the Dwight Howard. I mean, Dwight Howard's a fantastic player. Let's bring in Kevin Garnett. You know, how about that? I mean, I know Garnett won it in 2000, so you may say, you know, let someone else have it. But that's the problem. The dream team was everyone was so excited. The birds and the joint, the Met, they volunteered. Yeah, sure, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and dominate. I think it was in Barcelona, Spain. But I do think this is a great time for Kobe Bryant to show that he can finally win something without Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> it's huge right now. Kobe <laughs> needs to win something without Shaq. Yeah. He didn't win a championship. And he had a chance. Yeah, he had and a he chance. Yeah. You know? He blew it. Yeah. You know, the, he had the bait, okay? And he took it, and he failed. <laughs> you know, but I think it's huge. But what worries me is um, they don't really have a big man. Yeah, they don't. I mean, where, where are they going to get the inside problem? Dwight Howard is, is fantastic in defensively, but yeah, he's, not, he's not an offensive big man, though. And God forbid if one of them gets injured, they're going to be really small, like, the rest of the way. So, And I, never, I really think um, Dwight Howard and, I mean, they should be formidable, but the way international basketball is, they might get away with it because international yeah, players shooting. don't have big players. Yeah, true. But like I said, that's a weakness. If international players don't have big players, I'm getting big players, and we're going to attack on the inside. Me personally. Right. You know? But let's go to the next question. We're going to talk about international basketball. we got Dirk Nowinski, Mano Ginobili, uh, Tony Parker, all these international players coming to play in the NBA. Has international basketball caught up to USA basketball? No. Uh, I don't believe it. Well, the international players in the NBA, yes, but not the international players who play outside the NBA. How about in 2004? I, I, don't, I, don't, I really feel as though the NBA went down to the international level. And I, I honestly feel they were slacking. And the NBA were actually focused, at, now they're actually focused, actually hungry. I, I think they're unstoppable. So I really feel as though it's not necessarily, oh, they can't, the international... Uh, Level is being more competitive. I just think is 
NBA were just slacking, but they stepped up. I really think it's it's gonna be pretty easy for them. What do you think? Um, I'm I'm not on the money with Malloy on this one. Yeah. I mean, I I, I see so there's a lot of international players who came to the NBA and who's who's been doing a great job, but I think the talent level and and everything like such as that is still a still a landslide. I've seen a lot of flops come over from Italy and sure. Portugal. Yeah. Darko Milicic comes to mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's fourth run, fourth overall pick, and he's like the next Larry Bird. They say, you know, never heard of him. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it happening. We'll get a few players here and there, but good ones, proven players. But we're not going to get a lot. I think talent wise, they could be just as good as NBA players. Here's the problem. I think it's a culture shock. I think United States, will, you know, we have this. We 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 have a certain swagger about ourselves. We have a certain demeanor, an aggressive demeanor, okay? I mean, the Amari Stoudemire, the aggression, Shaquille O'Neal, that attitude, that swagger, Jordan, that swagger. The physicality as well. The physicality. Dirk Nowitzki is just as talented as these players, but he doesn't yeah. have the, the swagger, the demeanor, like I'm better than everybody. You know, USA, you know, we, they say we're arrogant, but a lot of times that arrogance comes in handy when we're, when we're playing and sports. And honestly, that comes from... Um, since we're little kids, play ball in the street, like yeah. with the trash talk and whatnot, that, that that basically toughens you up. So that's how that swagger comes about. So, yeah, like we have that, and many of these countries outside of the U.S. don't have it. Now, when we, now we're in the Olympics right now. You know, I remember back in '96 and 2000, not necessarily 2004. We were feared. Okay, when USA came to the building. Everyone knew what was going on. Okay, we were feared, mm -hmm. and we were look we were looked up to. Do we still have that fear right now when we walk into a building? Whoa, USA is coming. Let's play our A game, or we're gonna get absolutely blown out the gym. In terms of track, in terms of basketball, in terms of everything, do we have that fear in these Olympics right now? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think we have that certain fear. I, I still feel we have. It's more hatred to me than fear because. You know, yeah. the political spectrum and stuff and how the USA, whatever. But I feel as though it's more a dislike. And the fear, I don't feel this is a fear. I think they, I think that people think they can compete now. I think people think they can compete with the USA. I don't know if it's going to be, if it's going to come into fruition, but I yeah, think people, people can do. compete. Yeah. What do so. you think? Uh, right again, I'm on the money with Malloy. He's, he's. He's right again. I mean, you can't really argue with him. I think personally, first and foremost, that hatred is motivation. People can't stand. We can't. People can't stand us now. But can yeah. we use it as motivation? Yeah. No, I think other countries use it as motivation. Oh yeah, yeah. People right. cannot right. stand the United States. Mm -hmm. I remember Puerto Rico in 2004 destroyed the United States in the first game of the Olympic competition. Puerto Rico, no disrespect to them, can't handle candle to, to to us in basketball. You know, and the way Jamaica destroyed us in track. Okay, and actually, um, I think right now they're probably better than us in track right now in terms of pure talent. But we don't have that fear. And I think this is the Olympics where we have to sweep. I'm talking about multiple competition. We can't play around and get cute. Because yeah. we didn't get that power back. You know, we didn't get that power back. I feel like when we walk in there, it's in hatred and almost like almost as if, you know, we're the bully that's suddenly losing weight. Yeah. We're not that tough anymore. No. We're that bully that's lost weight. And frankly, I want to gain some weight. I want to gain some weight. <laughs> That is it for our first segment of, um, of Stepping Up. Next segment, we have to talk about what's going on in the United States. Mayor Mayors, you know, going to the Dodgers. That trade happened last week. And we have to talk